Uh, hello and welcome to another Wandering Warner video. Um, this is uh, the second part of the videos on the solar panel array on the roof of my self-built Mercedes Sprinter camper van. Uh, this has actually been on the roof of my van for about six weeks. I actually forgot um, that I uploaded part one uh, and to be honest I forgot I set up a YouTube channel um, so this is quite late uh, but I'm just going to give you a run through of how it all works on the roof of my van and um, the interesting thing obviously about this solar panel array on the roof of my van is it's automatic uh, in, automatic in the sense that it raises and lowers to angle itself towards the sun to get the maximum power output from the panel array uh, it does this by having you'll notice here there is a control box this control box is connected to that linear actuator that is attached to the roof of my van and also attached to the solar panel array and you'll also notice that there is a solar sensor down there which is that very small looking solar panel so and that's basically what it is it's two very small solar panels that are angled uh, oppositely to each other and they detect where the sun is in the sky and i'll go through that a bit when i go around to the other side of the van um, but what I'm going to do now is I am going to find the remote to uh, basically turn this control box on and let the solar panels raise up so you may be able to see on the control box there it says uh, manual um, which means that uh, the system is not going to be sensing where the sun is in the sky. It's just going to be controlled manually by this IO remote control. So I can uh, raise or lower the uh, system uh, manually by using the buttons on the remote. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to set the system to automatic. Uh, so it'll start detecting where the sun is in the sky and angling itself up. Now, this is um, a sort of wintry afternoon in Ireland and the sun is not in the best position it's basically sort of behind the van and quite low in the sky so when I do set this to automatic it's probably just going to go up the full way um, but let's just turn that on now so I'm pressing the button on the remote you'll see on the panel uh, it's switched to automatic uh, well it says to west which means it's detecting that the sun is uh, basically behind me and it's going to start angling up so you'll see that the linear actuator is starting to extend and the panel system is starting to angle up um, I will uh, go through how this is all uh, attached to the roof of the van uh, shortly and I will go to the other side of the van to show you how it all operates from the other side and how the cabling works and um, you'll see it's attached to this side of the van uh, with these sections of aluminium uh, box section um, now these are obviously attached to the panel system through these hinges now you will see there is a bit of rust on these hinges and I was sort of expecting that because these are standard chrome plated door hinges that are designed to be used indoors really um, so I was expecting them to rust um, they'll probably last quite a while even though they are showing bits of rust they'll probably last a couple of years but I will exchange them out for stainless steel uh, hinges at some stage. Um, these aluminium box sections are, uh, are connected together and through the roof of the van. So if I go around here and if the camera focuses, um, you'll see uh, there is a lock nut up there, which is at the top of a piece of threaded rod, which goes through this box section, through the next box section, the bottom of the box section and through the roof of the van um, obviously drilling holes in the roof of your van is uh, a little bit daunting it's one surefire way to get water into the inside of your van which you don't want there are various layers of sealant uh, mainly standard silicon uh, going through here on the threads of the bolts around a ring around each um, of the holes going through the roof of the van and then uh, all around the edge of each box section uh, 
it has been out in the Irish winter rain um, for six weeks or so and not a drop has gotten in uh, so it's pretty waterproof I've also driven the van quite a bit with this uh, on the roof so it's certainly stood up to the vibration and it all does seem to be waterproof but um, there are two as you'll see there are two of these M8 threaded rods going through uh, each section and through the roof of the van. I'll show you what that looks like from the inside. Um, the panel has stopped um, and it's still saying uh, to west on the control panel. So that basically means it's gone to its uh, full extension and it still wants, it still thinks the sun is over there, which is correct. The sun is still over there. So, um, but I have tested this with the sun at different positions in the sky and it does work surprisingly well it actually works better than i thought it would and um, it very accurately uh, tracks the sun and stops um, when it is at the perfect uh, perpendicular angle to the sun um, this control panel uh, it has various functions and you can program it with the remote um, you can program things like how much sun it has to detect uh, for it to move and basically between it detecting the sun so if it moves to a position how long it takes before it'll start looking for um, the strength of the sun and decide whether it wants to move again you'll see that it's just gone to a sun low mode that basically means that it's not detecting enough sunlight for it to consider making a move it's basically saying it's not worth moving the panels because the sun is so low and that's because the sun has just gone behind a set of clouds um, and again, you can program that. It's how strong or weak uh, the sun has to be before it goes into a sun low mode. Uh, and you'll see as well, there is a timer counting down there. So that is that timer is basically um, counting down. If, if it doesn't detect more sun by the time that timer counts down to zero, then it basically says that it's nighttime or it's a very cloudy day and the panel will actually retract you can it's currently set to retract to basically half way um to so in between fully down and fully up uh you can set that to return to home which basically means it'll go back down to a flat uh, position um which obviously would be quite useful um especially at night time so obviously in the evening as the sun is going down the panel is going to be in its full upright mode um and then what i'll probably set it to do is go back down to flat so it'll retract completely so that for the sunshine the next morning it's in the the flat position i.e the best position to get the, the the sunlight in the morning when it's coming up um, so there's various different things you can program on this control panel. It was pretty hard to figure out how to program it with this remote because as with many things uh, that you order from China, if you're lucky enough for it to come in an Engl with an English manual, it's usually a very badly translated English manual. Um, so this did come with an English manual. It was pretty badly translated, so there was a lot of guesswork and deciphering of the, the broken English to figure out how to program it. But it is programmable and it does work quite well uh, at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll maybe go into the inside of the van and show you how all this is connected uh, through the roof and then I'll go to the other side of the van and just give a quick run through of how it's connected over on that side. Uh, so we're now on the inside of the van, uh, obviously looking up at the roof. Uh, I'll just show you the two cables that come in. Um, well, this cable is going out, so that's 12 volts. Uh, going out which will power the control panel and the actual linear actuator these two cables are the uh, Positive and negative coming in off the solar panel array uh, that will be coming into the charge controller and charging the uh, Domestics batteries in the van. Uh, I should have mentioned that the the panels on the roof are connected in series and parallel So there's four panels on the roof uh, so two sets of uh, um, Series uh, panels they're both all the panels are 18 volt pa panels so connecting them to in series you get 36 volts um out of the panels so there's basically it's like two big solar panels that are producing uh, 36 volts that are connected then in parallel so it's basically 36 volts that will be going into the charge controller in the van uh, i'm just going to move the camera along here and you'll notice some large bolts coming through the roof of the van um so these are the sets of bolts that were 
connected to the uh, the aluminium box section that attaches the um, the solar panel uh, hinges basically to the roof of the van. Um, you'll see there's plenty of silicon uh, and they're attached with lock nuts as well. So there's silicon on the threads, silicon under the washers and silicon on both sides of the roof. Uh, I've checked these pretty consistently over the last six weeks when there's been heavy downpours of rain. There hasn't been a single drop getting in. So I'm pretty, and of course there's, there's been a lot of vibration in the van because I've driven it quite a bit as well. So I'm pretty confident that they are all um, very waterproof. Um, and you'll also see some very bad spray paint work there uh, because all the uh, the drill holes um, I did file down and then prime and put uh, rust proof spray paint on them as well. Um, you'll notice uh, I was sort of limited in where I could put these. I probably could have planned it a little bit better. You'll see this one is going through this uh, the edge of this support pillar here. I was pretty limited in where I could put the um the brackets that support the solar panel system because i have very little clearance between the rear roof vent of the van and the front roof vent of the van the solar panel array is obviously in the middle of those two and i have you know probably 20 mil clearance um in total um, that takes up basically all the room between uh, these two uh, roof fence. Uh, so I was limited in where I could put these supports. I probably could have planned it better as you'll see with this one. I went straight through the middle of this support pillar. It's not really an issue. I did have to drill out a big hole in the in the support pillar um, with a, a step drill bit um, and it was a nightmare as you can probably imagine getting the nut and washer up there um, into that but it all worked out fine i got everything torqued down correctly before the uh, silicon actually went off uh, the other thing to show is again possibly if i was doing this again i'd do it a little bit differently these two bolts um these stainless steel uh m8 or they might be m10s i think they're m10 bolts going through um would be uh, you'll see they're attached to this steel plate which is basically acting like a big washer um, and on the other side of these two bolts is the linear actuator, the end of the, the linear actuator, which is attached to the roof of the van. I'll show that again in a minute. There is a bit of flex when the linear actuator is pushing its hardest. Um, the roof does flex a little bit. Obviously, this is a, a sheet metal panel van, so there's always going to be some flex uh, on the roof. What I probably would have done if I was doing this differently is I would have used a slightly wider piece of uh, steel here and I would have made it longer, um, which would have reduced basically, again, as the, this is basically a big washer and the bigger the washer you make, the more surface area it has to support against the sheet metal roof of the van, which would have reduced that flex. I'm not sure how much it would have reduced it, but it would have reduced it somewhat. Again, it's not something I'm worried about. Um, there's a small bit of flex when it goes up and down, but you know, it's, it's not a huge amount and it's, it's, it's not something I'm going to worry about too much in the future. I don't think it'll cause any issues. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around to the other side of the van and uh, show you what the panel looks like from that side of the roof, the uh, driver's side of the roof. So I'm now over on the other side of the van, the driver's side, and just giving an overview of what the panel system looks like from this side. I've currently got it set in uh, manual mode about halfway down, so it's not um, angling itself towards the sun at the moment. Uh, it's just set as stopped. Um, I will give you... So this is obviously how it's attached to um, the roof of the van. I saw you from the inside, uh, these two bolts how they go up through uh, the roof from the inside and then you can see there's a uh, pin here that goes through the end of the actuator uh, which allows the actuator to rotate um, as it's extending out um, these two cables one cable is power uh, 12 volt power to the actuator the other cable runs all the way up to the um, solar sensor here which is obviously sending signals back down to the control box behind that aluminium box section about where the sun is in the sky so i will just get up a little bit higher and show you this so you can see it is two solar panels uh, on either side of this bolt and <coughs> it basically 
if this solar panel is producing more voltage than that solar panel, it knows that the sun is over in that direction. Um, and then of course, when both solar panels, mini solar panels are producing the same voltage, the, uh, the, the solar um, sensor knows that it's pointing, that the panels are pointing pretty much directly at the sun. So that's how it knows when to stop and start. Um, as you can see here, <coughs> um, this, a little bit hard to get on camera here, but this other bracket, it's very similar to that bracket there, if it's attached to the roof. But this bracket again, it has a pin, so it can rotate the end of the actuator. And then it is bolted, uh, the other end of that bracket is then bolted through the, um, the solar panel brackets, which attaches it there permanently, so it can uh, push on that and, and push the solar panels upwards. Um, I will probably actually cut that bolt down so that I can lower this uh, down a little bit more. Um, obviously one of the things, the only thing that's not ideal about this system is its height. So it is relatively high off the roof of the van. Now it's not that high, I mean like it wouldn't even be uh, as high as the height of the uh, roof vents. For example, that roof vent over there. And um, when that is open fully, um, this, this, or even open halfway, uh, the system isn't uh, higher than that. So it's basically like having uh, a roof rack on your van, essentially. Um, these bits of aluminium box section are uh, how it, well, the, the panel array obviously rests on those when it's down full. These, as you can see, are not bolted through the, the roof of the van. Uh, they are stuck on with uh, an adhesive called Sikaflex 512. Uh, which is a special uh, anti-vibration uh, adhesive used a lot in camper vans. Um, these are extremely uh, sturdy. They're not going anywhere, not coming off. Um, just because there's such a huge flat surface area gluing onto such a huge fat, flat surface area. Um, and it's such a high quality adhesive. Um, and obviously when the van is in motion, this solar panel array is resting down on these. So they're not gonna go anywhere. In fact, when I was doing the math, because of such a large surface area, um, I probably would have gotten away with it over there, so I wouldn't have actually needed bolts, but I just started to do the bolts, just to be extra sure. Um, but these are just here, literally, so the solar panel can uh, rest on top of them. Uh, the wiring of the panel, as I sort of mentioned uh, previously, these two panels are wired together, these two panels are wired together, um, so it's rather than four panels, it's basically these are wired in series and then parallel. So it's basically like two panels producing 36 volts each, which goes into the uh, charge controller. Um, so they're connected here together with the standard solar panel connectors. Can't remember what they're called, but they're this international standard for um, solar panels. And then they run to uh, those uh, waterproof uh, roof entry uh, grommets down at the end. Um, and that is pretty much it. It works uh, extremely well, uh, better than I thought it would in terms of angling towards the sun. Um, I have done some testing and uh, it, it pretty much came out as my calculations that angling it towards the sun rather than flat at certain times of the day gives more than 30% more power. Um, one, one of the main reasons I want that, and I'll probably put this in a, an additional video, is I'm actually planning to use the XX, excess power created by the solar panels to dump into a hot water tank. So um, basically, uh, once your batteries are fully charged in your camper van or boat or whatever you're using, your charge controller then dissipates, or, try, or, or well, it doesn't really dump or dissipate, but it basically, the excess power once your battery is fully charged is wasted. So I'm actually gonna do a voltage sensing relay which as soon as the batteries are fully charged, it's just going to continually dump the um, excess power created by the solar panels into a 12 volt um, uh, immersion heater element into a very small 25 liter water tank. So it'll very slowly over the space of an hour or two uh, actually heat up water. So I'll probably do a video on that next. So stay tuned, stay subscribed.